can stalking your ex's social media actually help you with your breakup? And the answer to that is yes. And that may sound shocking to a lot of you that have listened to me for a while because I have advocated for years to not stalk social media. And here's the thing, my friends. I've recently realized I was wrong. And what brought about that epiphany is that I spend so much time talking to people about social media and why you shouldn't be doing it, but people do it nonetheless. So obviously my tactic and my method and my knowledge is not working. The medicine has become the disease. And as they say, repeating the same shit over and over is the definition of madness. So I can't stop anyone from stalking their social medias. In fact, I've failed spectacularly in my quest to help people stop that. So if I can't stop you, I might as well fucking support you. And that is what today's video will be about, is using social media to your advantage. But before I get into that, welcome back to The Lola Fix. It's Nick, doing my best to get you through your breakups as easily and as healthily as I can. Guys, some good news. I am now on Instagram, so I would really appreciate it if you would give me a follow. The handle is at the dot lovefix. Just go to Instagram and type that in. I'm going to be doing very similar content that I do here, but I am considering actually doing some video and story content now, so you'll get to see my lovely mug, and if you want to put a face to the name, you can, or you can come and join my Facebook group, type in the Luffix Breakup Recovery and join, or you can just hit the one link in the description, go to my link tree, and all my links are there, that is everything from my one-to-one -one coaching, to my Spotify podcast, to my Facebook, to my Instagram. Okay, enough of my bullshit, let's get straight into it. My friends, let's be real. You've probably looked at your ex's social media, or you are going to look at your ex's social media. And okay, that's fine, I get it. And the reason it's so easy to do that is because you kind of exchange one addiction for another. Now, the first addiction that you had was with your ex. They were your main mechanism or delivery system for dopamine, and that is a very strong neurotransmitter pathway. And I'm probably messing up the actual scientific terminology here, but basically the bigger the dopamine response you get from something, the harder it is going to put down. And this is why drug addicts find it so hard to give up stuff like recreational drugs that become an addiction because the, the dopamine pathway is so big and intense and this is the same with your ex now one of the main pathways now to maintain a connection with your ex or to maintain that do dopamine delivery system is to stalk their social media and even if that is causing you a tremendous amount of pain we kind of become addicted to that response so you can become addicted to a stress response as just as much as you can become addicted to a dopamine response so the reason I've got this wrong is because I've been trying to force people, not force people like directly, but strongly knocking it into them. Look, guys, you must stop. This is going to hurt you so badly. But what I've been doing, I've been asking essentially drug addicts, in other words, people that are addicted to their ex's social media, to go cold turkey. And we can safely say that going cold turkey is not the correct way for most people. Some people can do it and that's fine. If you can, good on you and you're doing great. But for 95% of the rest of the world, that is quite impossible because you are exchanging one addiction for another. And I'm writing about this in my breakup book. And the reason this book is going to be called what it's called, Breaking Up With Your Breakup, is because we become addicted to the breakup. We form a relationship with the breakup. We are exchanging one addiction for another. Instead, what we should be trying to do is exchange one pain for another. Okay, the breakup is painful, but what is the other thing that I can do to help lessen that pain? And there are a number of strategies out there, and that going to the gym is a form of pain, or starting a new hobby is a form of pain, or starting a new job or volunteering is a form of pain because it makes us uncomfortable. But we comfortably drown in the shit that we sit in because it's warm and we don't want to leave that comfortable warm place even if it's toxic as fuck. Okay, so what do we do? So here's the thing my friends, I'm going to encourage you to actually go onto your ex's social media, but 
I want you to make a contract with yourself right now and start writing this down and start saying to yourself, okay, I'm going to go onto their social media, but I am going to stop by this date on whatever that might be. Give yourself a week, two weeks, four weeks or whatever. Now, I'll give you an example. I've just recently gone back to the gym because I was quite sick for two months recently. I had a, what I believe to be COVID and I've, I believe it was long COVID. The tests were coming back sort of inconclusive, but given how long it took me to recover and I've had breathing difficulties, I'm getting better, so don't worry, I'm fine. But I'm now having to rebuild my fitness from the ground up. I literally, over the course of that 10 weeks, lost all of my fitness. Now, yesterday, I got on to the stair machine, which is like a machine is like emulates going upstairs, so it just revolves around, kind of like an inverted treadmill. I lasted 90 seconds on it and I was exhausted. Now, today I got on it and I pushed myself to two minutes. So, what I'm trying to say is, I can't do that cold turkey. I can't just go from zero to doing 30 minutes on that machine. No, I've got to build it up in 10, 20, 30 second implements. So, I'm going to encourage you to do the reverse with social media, is decrease that time by 10, 20, 30 second implements. So, give yourself a time limit. So, right, I'm spending no more than two minutes on this person's page and I'm, I'm gonna cut it off and then try to better it the next day. Because guys, you're gonna do it. And with any kind of addiction, you have to wean yourself off it unless you have a remarkable ability to just go cold turkey. Now look, I have some ability in some parts of my life to go cold turkey on certain things. Like for example, if I'm gonna decide that I wanna cut 10 pounds, I can just go into diet mode. I can just go into cutting mode. I start tracking my calories religiously and I can do it. Some people can't, that's okay. So that strategy is not for them. So this is where I have found you as a content creator, as someone that coaches people, as someone that is supporting people through these breakups. I failed in this area, I got it wrong because I was able to cold turkey my way through that. I made a promise to myself on day one of the breakup, I will not look at the socials because I know what it's going to do, do to me. The pain the, or the potential pain of what it would do to me was bigger than the addiction. So for me, the addiction became not doing it. So I had to find a different addiction. I just found a better addiction or a better pain. And that's where you have to be. Now it's going to sting. You, you're in pain anyway, and if you can't stop yourself from going on social media, I hear you, but you must start desensitizing yourself to it and make this agreement. And it's okay, guys. Look, your, your, your brain is like a big delivery system of feel-good neurotransmitters and other stuff that makes you feel shit. It's the biggest supplier you've got. And we need to find a way to work with it, not against it. The pain is there for a reason. The pain is not trying to hurt you. The pain is trying to teach you a lesson. It's trying to say, hey, look, something's wrong here. I don't like it. Please help. Please work with me. Please fix it. And we have to find ways to make friends with that part of ourselves rather than fight it. So as you may know, I like to come at things from the other angle. I love a counter-intuitive strategy. I'm all for it. And I got it wrong, and I'm sorry. The, med the medicine has become the disease. I've tried for over three and a half years to stop you guys from going on social media, and yet I get people in my Facebook group every day saying they cannot stop the socials. And there's me bashing my head against the wall, saying, right, you must stop, you must stop, you must stop. And they're saying, Nick, I can't. Okay, it's time to change the strategy. So my friends, sit back, write it down, make an agreement with yourself and keep yourself accountable. Have a calendar up and mark off the days. Okay, I, I, I was 20 seconds less on this day and now today I'm one minute down and try to get that to every other day of not stalking their social media and eventually you'll stop. So that's all for today. I hope that helped. Sorry for being wrong, but I'm big enough to admit when I'm wrong. That's all for today. You're going to be fine and I will see you on the other side.